Hello everyone, today we're going to do one more example where we need to use L'Hopital rule to evaluate the limit. This example looks simple, it's just 4 sine times log, but somehow it brings a lot of troubles to students. So I decided to make a special video for this example. Let's review briefly L'Hopital's rule. L'Hopital's rule tells us that if you have a situation when x approaches a as a 0 over 0, or plus minus infinity plus minus infinity, then instead of working with those nasty functions which you usually see, you can differentiate each and work instead with the rates. Basically, we're comparing instead of regional functions, we're comparing the derivatives, which makes sense. If you want to find the ratio of two functions, you can sometimes find the ratio of their speeds or rate of change, changes, instantaneous rate of changes and then the result will be the same for some kind of conditions, of course. So you need to, use, you need to read carefully when you can use L'Hopital's rule. Let's do it. Here I see product. I don't see even a quotient like in the uh, theorem that tells us when we can use L'Hopital's rule. Then let's create a quotient. We were trying to teach you that you have to be creative. And if you don't see a quotient, create it yourself. And when we create those quotients, it means either you putting sine at the top and then 1 over ln x at the bottom, or you have ln x at the top and then 1 over 4 sine x at the bottom. And this should fix the situation. Do you understand why? Because ln, when x approaches 0, sine goes to 0 log at zero is minus infinity, right? So in this case, I actually have zero times minus infinity. Do you remember how log looks like at zero? When x approaches zero, log dives down to negative infinity. So in this situation, when I create this kind of fraction, what do I have when I have one over negative infinity, negative infinity, 1 over negative infinity is 0, so I'm working with 0 over 0 case, and now I can apply L'Hopital's rule. Same here for the second situation. ln at 0 plus is negative infinity over sine at 0 is 0, 4 times 0 is 0, but 1 over 0 is some kind of infinity, plus or minus, you have to check that. So we're working here with the infinity over infinity case, plus or minus, doesn't matter. Now we can apply L'Hopital's rule. Well, choose which case do you want to do. And usually we recommend you to have log in the top. Why? Because it's kind of challenging to differentiate 1 over log. But actually it doesn't matter. The answer will be still the same. But the general recommendation tells you keep log at the top. So I'm going to have limit as x approaches 0 plus. Then I will have natural log in the numerator. And then 1 over, 1 over 4, and this 4, I don't even actually have to care about this 4 thing. So I will just put it outside because uh, the constant can be kicked out outside of the limit. The constant doesn't change, doesn't move. And actually laws of limits tells you that you can do that. So I don't even have to have it over here, over here, but whatever. Then I will have 1 over sine x. Do you all understand that 1 over 1 over sine x is times sine x? So we did not really change anything. We're just rewriting whatever we're given in a different form. It's basically the same thing as rewrite. I always teach it this way. 7 times 8 is the same thing as 7 over 1 over 8. Makes sense? 7 over 1 over 8 is 7 times 8. So that's the idea what we're doing here. We're just rewriting product as quotient. Now, now we have a situation of infinity over infinity. In the top, we have minus infinity. At the bottom, I don't know. We need to check this out. So we are going to make a note. I like making this kind of note, L slash H, and put it in a circle. That indicates to the reader that we're using L'Hopital's rule. Have a good habit to make good notes. 
In the future, you might become a scientist and you will be publishing some re results and sharing them with other scientists and with other scientific labs. If you don't keep good notes, it's just rude for other scientists to read your notes and spend and waste time guessing what was you doing over there. So it's just a good habit to start early to write good notes. Now, L'Hopital rule I can dif tells me I can differentiate the top function before calculating the limit and the bottom function. Derivative of log is 1 over x. Not too bad. Derivative of 1 over sine. Okay, do you want to rewrite 1 over sine as cosecant, cosecant x? I don't like that. But if you do that, you know derivative of cosecant. It's going to be minus cosecant cotangent and so on and so on. Then you will have to work with those functions. You cannot, you can do it optional. Check yourself that the answer will be the same. I don't like working with cosecants and cotangents and secants. So I will just use chain rule because one over sine x is just sine x to the negative one. Then derivative will be minus one over sine x squared. Make sense? That's the derivative. Negative one goes down, sine to the negative two. Let's rewrite everything nicely. It will be four limit x approaches zero plus. Now one over x tells me that I can write it as one over x. X goes to the denominator. Negative 1, I can put it over here to the negative 4. And then 1 over sine squared. The sine squared goes to the top. And now I just realized that I forgot something. While I'm finishing writing, did you notice that I forgot something? Something is missing. And that will change the whole answer. Well, have I ever differentiated sine? That's how you catch the chain rule mistake. If the function was given and you was differentiating it, you were supposed to differentiate all parts of it. If I was working with one over sine, I did differentiate one over sine, but I never differentiated the sine itself. That means I lost chain rule. So don't forget to do times derivative of sine. Derivative of sine is cosine x. Nice. If you fix your mistake fast enough, maybe nobody will notice you made the mistake. Then I will have sine x at the top and cosine x still at the bottom. Let's see, maybe it's good enough and now we can calculate the limit. What do we have here? Definitely we have negative 4, doesn't matter about that. But what's going on at the top? The top part, sine at 0, it's still 0. The bottom part. Uh, cosine at 0, cosine at 0 is 1, so that, that doesn't change anything. That's fine. But x at 0 is 0. So we're having 0 over 0 case again. If we're having 0 over 0 case again, guess what we're going to do? We're going to apply L'Hopital rule second time. You will see sometimes you, you have to apply L'Hopital rule many, many times, especially with recursive functions until you get the final result. Let's do that. There was an equal sign here. I will have equal sign over here, negative 4, limit x approaches 0 from the right, huge fraction. The top is general again, 2 goes down, sine x times, change the power, it becomes 1, times Derivative of sine is cosine x. Did not forget this time. At the bottom we have product rule. See how fast I can do that. Can you catch up with me? It's going to be 1 times cosine x plus x times negative sine x. If you was faster than that and you even simplified all the negative signs, then you're good. You finally become very professional at doing product rules and quotient rules. Almost done. Let's simplify and see if there's anything else we need to do. And maybe we need to apply L'Hopital rule one more time. 
I have 2 sin x cos x over cos x minus x sin x. Doesn't look good, but we'll see. Maybe it's not that bad. Let's stay optimistic. So sine at 0 is 0. Fine. Cosine at 0 is 1. Not too bad. Cosine at 0 is 1. Sine at 0 is 0. And x at 0 is 0. So this guy is 0 times 0. Okay, this looks horrible. But maybe not. Let's carefully simplify or write down the result and see maybe it's not 0 over 0 case or infinity over infinity or 0 over infinity. Let's see. Negative 4 times. What do we have? We have 2 at the top, 0 at the top and 1 at the top. At the bottom we have 1 minus 0 times 0. Well, this is actually not too bad. Negative 4 times. The numerator, the top, is 2 times 0 times 1, which is 0. The denominator has 0 times 0 part. Well, that's 0. That looks like a very scared face expression. 1 minus 0 is 1. So actually, I'm working with 0 over 1. 0 over 1 and times negative 4 is 0. The answer for this problem is 0. We applied L'Hopital rule twice. I did prepare a picture for you, just did not want to spoil the answer. But actually, this is how it looks like. This is the function which was given at the beginning. y equals 4 sine x and an x. What happens when x approaches 0? The function decreases to 0. Interesting to point out, I always point this out, if you see some kind of trigonometric function, sine or cosine, uh, multiplied or added and so on, usually that indicates some kind of oscillation or basically waves. We know that sine is a wave, we know that cosine is the wave, but log makes this wave to shrink or stretch. And since log at infinity is increasing, the wave now at infinity is increasing. Very interesting. So at some point you'll become so good at that. You will see so many functions in your practice that you will have very good intuition of what this function looks like and what is the behavior of this function. Sine times log is some kind of wave. And now you can see that is the case. The challenging part was to identify what is happening when x approaches zero. Because log at zero will push it to minus infinity, but sine at zero will push it to zero. So it was interesting which one goes faster, which one approaches whatever it approaches faster when x goes to zero. Sine wins in this case, and everything shrinks to zero as a result. Thank you for watching.